Hello, I'm Slide from Navi. In the last two episodes of Science of Victory, Eric and I told you about basic tactics to use on Cliff. I will now answer the most interesting questions you left in the comments. But before that, I'll say a few words about how to play this map with my setup. Let me remind you, my setup consists of two T1s, two IS-3s, a 50, 100, a 90, and a T32. The difference in comparison with the all-purpose setup we usually talk about is using the American Heavy to replace one 50, 100. This tank is really useful on cliff. The map has a lot of variance in the terrain, and it means that the well-armored American turret can be really useful. If you use a tank with a sturdy turret, like the T-32 or the Pershing, I suggest you place it on the hill at E-6, instead of using a 90. Instead of just providing intelligence, it can do some real damage from this position. The turret armor will make it possible to play aggressively at that position without losing HP, and since the tank doesn't suffer from long reloads, it won't be caught defenseless in a surprise attack. Now I'll answer the questions you left in the comments after the last two episodes of the show. All of the answers are based on the all-purpose setup from now on. Tell me how to deal with the medium setups. Pershing, 1390, 69. The advantage of our setup is that it's heavier, more HP, and stronger armor. You need to make good use of this. Use the IS-3's turret armor and have the 5100s provide cover for them if they come under attack by autoloaders. Avoid taking damage as much as you can and take opportunities to damage the enemy little by little. Once you have the advantage, go to the attack. Focus your fire on the autoloaders to prevent them from getting off more than a single drum. If the enemies attack immediately, you'll have to do everything right and use your HP advantage to get the win. This will not be easy though. Cliff requires very good coordination and rapid decision making from both the captain and the teammates. Please explain what to do when the enemy has a faster setup. For example, two 1390 or a 1390 and a T69. In this case, the fast enemy group drives uphill through the first second lines and they can hammer my team from two sides. Is the first second line a viable option for the heavies? In general, our all-purpose setup is not as well suited for Cliff than for many other maps. Faster setups really are better here. But remember, you can't choose the map. If you pick a faster setup, you will have problems with city maps. If you start at the lower base and the enemy setup is much faster, you can try going through the line one with all your tanks. This is risky, but it can work. The enemy won't have time to take the high ground and they won't be able to deal with the IS-3s. When starting from the top, try to play it the way we described in the previous episode. What if the enemies from the bottom base have taken F3 and they also have vehicles that can tank with the turret? How can you break this defense? You forgot to tell us about the situation where the tank setup is similar, but the enemy LT-8 occupies the ledge at the center of the map and you get caught in the crossfire. You can troll the enemy and support an attack from there, as well as help with defense. Two IS-3s make use of their turrets on Line 5, harassing the enemy tanks and trying to help the AMX-5100 and the AMX-1390 get from E6 to E3 without taking any damage. Before you start the maneuver, 150-100 has to take the position of the 90 under the hill and continue x-raying the enemy. You should only do this if you've seen the enemy's main forces near the trees, and you are sure that there are no more than two enemy tanks at F3. The AMX-5100 can outshoot any opponent, and the 90 can take on his French cousin. You can also get the enemy tank out of F3 if the enemy doesn't have Line 1 covered. Then an allied T1 can go to G1, H1 to spot and distract the 90 in F3 from there. By the way, you can spot a 90 climbing to F3 with the help of a T1. To do this, the T1 needs to aggressively take the bush at D1. If the tier 1 goes the right way and someone is at lines 1-2, the sixth sense light will surely go off. If this happens, then it can only be the AMX 1390 who could have spotted him, no one else. In fact, depending on the spawn positions, sometimes the 90 can even get spotted directly. What if the enemy tier 8s and 1s are coming around the lighthouse? What to do? It's simple. They will definitely be spotted by the T1. You should hide behind the rocks at E6, E7. These are great positions to take for receiving a rush coming from the lighthouse route. You'll be able to hide from the enemy tanks if they try to come at you from the center. Play it as the situation develops. Make the right decisions quickly and victory will be in your pocket. That is all. We've examined all the basics of Cliff and now we'll move on to a new map. In the next episode, we'll be talking about mines. Leave comments and subscribe to our channel. Bye everyone.